Welcome to Whispers in Westeros, where Mark Ford cannot keep his shit contained. <laughs> episode that, one and episode two, since, you know, episode one was basically just a setup, guys, right? And episode two, where we get the biggest question answered, finally, that everybody's been going nuts about all season break. So oh, should we, should, Shouldn't we have something that says, like, spoiler alert here? Spoiler alert! We should have a banner somewhere, but I'm going to say it. Spoiler if alert. Listening, there's gonna, if you're listening, you're listening, want to know. Yeah, Whispers in Westeros is a show where we break down each episode each week as this season goes on. Except so with week. me today, we have Gamma Tube's own CEO. We are going to start off this show by saying, Hello, Mark. Thank you for having us on. My name is Dan Miller, and uh, also we have... Alex Chelberg here, a member of the TGR Entertainment family and oh, uh, a friend. You. Oh, I thank you. Oh, I take that to heart. I take that to heart. I'm so. It's the first time I've ever talked about Game of Thrones uh, and had people hear me. So that's great. I've talked to myself about it, but here we are. <laughs> right. I, I sometimes I want to talk to people at work about it, and it's just like, yeah. how 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 deep and nerdy can I get without? Yeah. Feeling like people are giving me the old stink eye. It's like, exactly. yeah, okay, man, this is the show. They're like, whoa, you're way too into this. I, I, it, it takes you out of your comfort zone. You can't talk about uh, the finer details. So here we are amongst uh, the super nerd. Yeah, so, Mart, what happened? How did we start off this uh, episode one? What was it called? What was the title of the uh, episode? It was called The Red Woman. The Red Woman. The Red Woman. Right, and oh, God, my goodness. But the thing is, right... It was it was a great episode. It it kind of just filled in a lot of the gaps between season five and season six. Oh yeah. But the most prominent part of that episode was the end. Yeah. Seeing mm -hmm. all the really saggy boobs. That <sighs> was the most interesting part of that episode. Well, yeah. I mean, she's looking like she's a little over a hundred. You know, a hundo. Uh, she's she's about like maybe a couple hundred years old, right? Oh, she's four hundred. Four hundred. She is four hundred years old. How do you know this? Um, it's an exclusive. It's... Oh no, it's not. Ex oh gosh, what do I just remember? Break, well, just break, real layman's terms. Break it down real quick. I'm I'm not I'm not questioning your knowledge. I you sounded very convincing, so I I just wasn't sure how old she I, was. I, th I, I don't remember she was reading it. Years for a very long time. Um. um Hmm. You know what? This is one of those things where uh, I'll have to get back to you to remember where I had that thought put into me. <laughs> right. It, well, there is like so much, uh, there's exactly. so much yeah, little yeah. There's... things in these books and and in these episodes that you have really have to pick up on it because if you don't, you know, little things like that get lost. And you know what? I I believe it. I believe that she'd be 400 years old. She looks it. Holy crap! You see what everyone's been boinking, sticking Ooh, it to? What does that mean? Yeah, but why does what does that mean? Fair. If she looks like that, or if she looked like how she looks at 400 years old with the magic, yeah, I'd boink a 400-year-old woman too. All right, all right, all right, yeah. But yeah, so... It's all in perspective. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but her, but her, like, them revealing that at the end, because we, I don't remember getting that in the book uh, up till up to now, and I'm going to try to cross-reference what I remember from that, because I'd have to read through them all again, but I'm trying to cross-reference the things that I remember in the book to what we're getting right now, and some of it's still happening in the books, what they're doing, and, and some of it's beyond what I've seen, you know, read, because we haven't got Winds of Winter yet. So I'm just trying to somehow maybe see we we have I don't think we have gotten that so far as of what George R. R. Martin has written in the pages. You know what it was? From December 16, 2013, I wrote it the I, I read it the day it came out. I remember reading this this theory that she's 400 years old based off a reference that was like indirect implying that it was her that was the character mentioned that was a 400-year-old witch. Okay. And since then, I've not seen any evidence. But that was from December 2013. But and now you. It, it says that she is 400 years old. That's what they said in 2013. All right. Um, and I, you know what? I believe it. She, I mean, look I, at I it. can give you guys the link to it. But that I remember reading this exact article on some forum way back when. So. All right. Hey. Yeah. I, I. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna even try to 
I question it. I, I'm pretty sure from what she looked like, man, she looked really friggin' old. And it looks like she... And wait, wait, wait. Was, here it is. This, is. this is from the book directly. Here's the quote right here. While, take, while uh, talking about Melisandre, uh, he told about the poison scene during blah, 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 and asked to Carice... Uh, here it is, the quote. Why don't you die, Carice asks Melisandre, in which she replied, I'm 400 years old. And then, then, and then, like, a total change of scene. I don't even remember what book that's from, but that, I mean, they say it's a quote from the book, um, and I don't even remember the context, but that's what they said. All right. All right. So it's like one of those things where if you really weren't paying attention, and sometimes even reading stuff, you just read over things, you know what I mean? And, and mm -hmm. it's, it's hard to remember. So, and these books are so detailed that it's almost easy to forget so wow, so she's 400 years old, and like Mark just brought up, there's there's got to be something there. Even you just said, you know, wh why why are we getting this now? Why are we getting this picture of her? Why are we seeing her as this old witch? Like, what are the what are they trying to tell us with that part? I think, uh, if anything, it's going to be the fact that she has a lot of stories from the Targaryen era going back all those all those years. All right. the stories and you know what she i mean who she advised before stannis mm -hmm. came along and yeah you know has she been to the red keep before yeah and i mean has she has she worked with well from my understanding this this religion comes from valeria right mhm mm mm -hmm. yeah so she was around i mean it sounds like uh when the last of the dragons were around um right. The Targaryens. Well, they said they said the last of the dragons um, it was over a thousand years ago. Over a thousand, yeah, over a thousand yeah. years old, and they were the size of cats. Okay, all right, yeah, because the the Mad King didn't. They didn't have any dragons. They had the the room of all the old dragon skulls of old and stuff like right. that, but they never owned any. It was their ancestors that had them. But uh, so we, who do we we got Tyrion? He's walking around in that episode, and everything is in dire straits, right? Like, freaking well, Tyr Khaleesi Tyr is losing losing sh her shit right now, basically. I mean, she's Tyrion not... Tyrion has that brief moment with that red priest in the little market square before he goes <sighs> into the brothel. Okay, mm -hmm. that's right. Well. And then Khaleesi, we see that she has to go to the friggin' whatever, Temple of the Dead uh, Widows of the Calls, right? Right. So what? Like that? We haven't seen anything past that yet in episode one, and and from episode two, we didn't get to see her be there. So I can't wait to see what this uh, temple of you know widows is for it's for all these. It's gonna be very somber. Yeah, I mean, who very knows? Very non-sex related. It's gonna be very nunnish. I feel. It, you think uh, so? I don't know. These and to be the the to be the wife of a call, you've got to be a strong, wild woman. I think it's going to be like a really, really aggressive book club. I think, yeah. I think there's <laughs> going to be like this. There's going to be the one main call, like like the one tough, you know, tough bitch there that's like, you know, the head of all of the other widows. There's going to be some sort of fighting initiation. But there always is. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be awesome. What if, what, if Daenerys goes, what if Daenerys goes to this place and she raises an army of women? Oh my god! Oh, oh. wow! That's beautiful. That's beautiful. A, a widow's army, right? And I mean, because like the, these, the only reason these guys take these women as their wives most of the time is because they're they can they're strong. Right. I mean, the call uh, Drogo at first took Daenerys. I mean, come on, she was a specialty, but he ended up <laughs> falling in love with her because she could handle like everything. You know, she was able to freaking eat that whole heart. Like it was nothing. Uh, she's a badass bitch. So, all I'm saying is this whole place is going to be full of some pretty strong women, and that's a that's a pretty awesome uh, way to look at it, Mart. Maybe she, you know, bands you all these that? chicks I mean, together. All, all of the the calls that have been um, in the Dothraki throughout history. I mean, because there's as as the Dothraki have separate hordes. I mean, there could be forty, fifty hordes at one time, anyway. Mm -hmm. This and is known. Go back, you know, right? You go back all the many years that these uh, calls could have been. I mean, we could be talking about good, you know, few thousand, hundred thousand, you know, women. 
just sitting in one city wow. who were probably pissed for being there in the first place because they don't want to be there. Yeah. Yeah, and, and what, I mean... And she, she unites them all and puts them under one cause. But it sounds like they have been treated with respect. I mean, when she told that call that who she was, who she was the what, like they, you know, they weren't going to touch her. Mm. You know, it's like well, they, they hold strong to some sort of honor. You can yeah. be respectful to your own prisoners, though, and that's what they are. Yeah, they, but they're they not. Are they are clearly not respectful to any of their prisoners. They rape and pillage. Well, that's what they yeah, do. Yeah, I, I know, but but they're still going to a place, and they don't have a choice about it. They have to go to this place. I mean, she, does, she Daenerys doesn't want to go there. Yeah, oh, well, I know she doesn't want to go there, but, I mean, at least it's like they were, they were, ready, to, they were ready to – they were ready to – take her down and you know once they realized who she was they treated her with more respect even though they're like all right yeah well you know what even though we're not going to do anything to you um you got to go to this little widow's it was prison. like it was like she's like in this club i'm like oh you're in that club well that's i can't touch anyone in that club you're expected to live a life uh befitting of your status and uh we can't touch that like oh well i'm sorry i like i kissed on your neck like <laughs> like the gods say that like you are gonna live this this life that's befitting of a a Khaleesi uh, that's a widow. So it's it's a very big cultural thing to them. Yeah, like huge. yeah. yeah they are than anything. They're very tribal. They they very they like they stick to their beliefs very strongly. So I mean, it's it's gonna be. I, I just can't wait to see where she goes. So we've got Khaleesi now that she's up in the air. What's going on with her? We know where she's going, but we don't know what's gonna happen. Because uh, I didn't read about this in the books either. We are now beyond a point where a lot of this story is not involved. Uh, Jorah, his his grayscale is getting larger. Um, is he going to get healed? Is he not? We know that it's possible because of Stannis Baratheon's daughter. Mm-hmm. Right. Who is now... Uh, crisp. Crispy. Yeah. Crispy. Yeah, she's just crispy. Crispy daughter. So, who else do we? Oh, oh, and the Sand Snakes uh, in Dorne. Oh, of course. Yes, yes. Now that was something else. Now, so we had <laughs> them kill Doctor Bashir from Deep Space Nine, Star Trek. I can't remember his. He's the Prince of Dorne. Um, he's got the bad gout and his crazy wheelchair. You could have just called him the Prince of Dorne and just gone away with that then. Well, I'm just, everybody loves Deep Space Nine. No, but they don't. They should. Uh, Mark, your mic is kind of breaking up a little bit. Oh, it's not me for once. Whew. Nah, just a little bit. I will of... say, I will say, there's one way you can avenge your lover's uh, reputation, and that's by killing his brother and his kingdom's uh, rulers, of course. So, okay. great job, great job by uh, Oberyn's lover. That's how you revenge uh, Oberyn's death instead of you know. Maybe doing a little bit more to the Lannisters, perhaps. Well, she, yeah, she, she had all of those guards on her side because they did nothing. They didn't move. No. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So is it just her or was it that everyone in Dorne felt that way? That that was the we, movement? To be honest, we haven't really seen very much of Dorne besides that one little palace. Yeah, you're right. We haven't. But one thing that we have gotten from the Dorn, the Dornish people is that uh, Oberyn was the strong one. Oberyn was the favorite. Everyone loved Oberyn, and Oberyn wasn't afraid to to try to push Dorne's power a little bit. And uh, with him gone, and you have oh, man, it's really pissing me off. Uh, we have the prince here. I can't think of his friggin' name. It's killing me. Gout uh, boy, gout man. Yeah, we got gout guy on the on the old Wheels. throne on the old wheelchair throne that he's got. Um, and he's not doing anything because he's afraid. He doesn't want to start. Whoa! He's looking at the sp the springs with all the kids playing and having a good time, and he doesn't want any of it to get ruined. And mm -hmm. you know, and here we have uh, Oberyn's uh, honey putting some poison lipstick on and killing Marcellus and uh, and Lannet. Dude, Jamie's pissed. Jamie is because like. I feel like that whole ordeal that he went through it like humbled him to appreciate like his like kids, even though you know they're it's really weird because he's still banging his sister. 
But you know, uh, he should have killed the fucking Bernie Sand. I mean, um, what's his name? Uh, the 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 Sparrow. The, the uh, Bernie Sanders I, I, guy. I, 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 say, I swear he's a Bernie Sanders. Oops. Is that a Freudian slip? Well, what do you? Th- what, I mean, if he did, the, all of those uh, sons of the Sparrow, whatever the hell they're called, those guys would, I would all kill I would him have personally. I mean, not that I would have sex with my sister. Hand. True, um, but. The words that that guy said, I would not have sex with my sister and have three children with him, her, it. Uh, but it's, it's it's a different story when like that guy is like making those direct threats and you don't know that he has like a whole army of people around. I don't know. I think I would have just killed him right there and then. That was his yeah, chance. Like a, a stab in the neck and boom, watch it bleed out all over the place. But yeah. it was it was beautiful that he was like the sparrow was like. I am more powerful than you because I have nothing to lose. All these people around me, they have nothing to lose. But you, you are the king. You are the person in charge. You're the person that has this royalty. And that is what makes it so that you are weak and not able to strike me down. And that was power, I thought. Yeah, I mean, and we were seeing him gain all this power towards the end of the, the last book we read, too. You know, this guy had just used his... Being able to, he he dresses in nothing besides a rag, no shoes, no nothing. He doesn't wear anything. No wraps mm-hmm. around his feet. You know, he feeds the poor. But I, I don't know. I feel like he's got some sort of a. I don't know. There's there's always an end game. There's always an end game. But even you know, religious Absolute power. I think is yeah. his end game, and I think he wears the cloak of humility and not being afraid to be killed. As his, that's that's what empowers him, for people to be like, this guy's not fucking around. Like he doesn't give a shit if someone kills him. He's gonna keep doing what he's doing, which is why right. Jamie decided not to. He's like, these people are, all these people are just like him, and are not willing to, to you know, they're willing to die. They don't care. They feel like right. they're nothing as it is. Okay. All right. I mean, yeah. when, when you've got such a a, a cult like that, anyway, the moment you strike down the leader, someone else is just gonna take his place anyway. Yep. I mean, and I, you know, it would probably be Lancel. It'd, it'd be Lancel. Yeah. He was like the first initiate. He yeah, you get that head. You get that head engraving, and like you, you're dedicated. You can't give up on that. Yeah, you're it's, in, man. It'd be you're awkward in. if you're like in a in a in a tavern. Like, hey, what's that all about? Oh, it's a old religion I used to follow. I don't believe in it anymore. You can't do that. You gotta yeah, you gotta yeah. follow through. That is some, yeah. That is a that is a serious way to dedicate yourself. To any religion is to you know just a permanent what is it a brand or a uh, or a scarification on his forehead? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Whatever. Still, that's some serious shit. Uh, so we have all that go down, but I'm trying to see if we missed anything from the first episode. So we've got uh, we had what happened with the sand snakes. We had uh, see we saw Jora. We got to oh, see. Let, oh well. Let's, let's just talk very very quickly about uh, Prince Tristan of Dawn's death because. Mm-hmm. That was awful. That what? Was like, that was like really great, but bad. I can't. He had a spear go through the back of his head, straight through the front. Yeah. It was beautiful. It was beautiful. It was. It was. It was. It was like really bitchy thing to do, man. Wasn't yeah, really I, I was shocked. You got. Why didn't you give him a chance? I would have given him a chance. You guys are there. They talk all this shit, and I think I, I was. I thought he was ready to. I thought he was gonna be like, all right, he's gonna kill one of them. Like and they're gonna he's gonna totally surprise them and kill one of them. No, and he was hopeless, hopeless yeah. little hopeless little boy against these two devout followers of Hale, uh What's her name? I don't know what her name is. Uh, I can't remember either. We're we're so bad at this. All right, so you've got the you know you've got the, the one the chick super, that wants to be the super dominant, curly haired, black haired woman. The super dominant Dorn woman that has three daughters with Oberyn. There you go. Yeah, That's number thirty thirty two. Yeah, number thirty two. Number 32. All right. So number 32 and then her daughters, the two daughters, they challenge, uh, oh, do you want to kill him, blah, blah, blah. And he, you know what, and you knew that he was weak. And I thought that's why you were going to get him to at least kill one of them because it was like, I feel like that's the way it works sometimes with this show. It's like you're completely surprised by what you think is going to happen, but it never does. You know, like... Uh, like, like the, the the underdog always seems to pull through, and you knew who was the underdog in this situation. You knew the. I would say badass. the strong person pulls through in here, in this story. It it, well, 
I wouldn't John say the Snow. underdog necessarily, but cause, well, I mean, because like Tyrion's the underdog. I think it's a underdog. fair distribution. It's fair. It's a fair yeah. distribution of underdogs and people who deserve, or and people that are overly dominant. It's it's a fair balance between the three. Right. You know? Right. I, I yeah. think this show is fair in all means, in a way that people cannot understand, because they they think fairness is you know the prince comes and saves you and everything is hunky dory. Yeah. And no, so. No. This this does have you know Snoop Dogg just said and this is not a direct quote but Snoop Sorry? Snoop Dogg said that he watches Snoop Game Dogg. of Thrones Snoop yeah, Dogg I want to hear this Snoop Dogg says I watch Game of Thrones for historic reasons to understand the history of where our uh, planet came from now, Snoop you, you, Dogg if you're watching you're a fucking idiot Why? yeah yeah well but 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 that the tone of the Middle Ages, I think, is in, in encapsulated totally. through the show in many ways. And I think that's what Snoop Dogg meant. I think yeah. he, uh, he was very, very high, but he still meant what he said. Like it make, He doesn't literally believe that this is history. history. It right. wouldn't fucking surprise me if he is that stupid. No, no, no. He's, yeah, he is that brain dead. I do think that's brain possible. dead. But I don't think he's that dumb to think that this is actual history. Like his wording, his wording is the issue. Yeah, exactly. I think what he's saying is like I, I he's getting a look at the 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 way civilization was back then, and that's the way it was in the Middle I Ages. I think you're man. giving him too much credit. No, I, wasn't not, there a I, rapper who recently was arguing about the fact that the Earth's flat or some shit as well? Yeah, and you know what? And many people came against that, and there's always some. Idiot. There's always some retard that doesn't understand the basic tenets of reality. Yeah, and I don't. I don't think Snoop Dogg is that fucking. Spoiler stupid. alert! I mean, Game of Thrones is a TV show. <laughs> yeah. Here, I'm gonna. Yeah, I'm, I'm sending you true. right now the. Uh, I'm sending you right now the article that references that exact quote. Great. I'm not putting the article in the video, so don't look for it, anybody. <laughs> well, I'm just saying there's a real quote, and it's from May May 9th. It's Snoop Dogg on it. I'm not God reading damn it. Snoop Dogg. Last year, actually, last I love year, it. actually. No, but it's funny though, because I, I mean, I actually thought of that too. Like, just not like saying, "Oh, I'm watching history," but I, I'm like thinking about it, and I'm like, man, you know, back in the time when we were swinging swords, and there wasn't like a police force or anything like. You, if you were big and strong enough, you could walk into somebody's freaking home, murder everybody, do what you want, and then live in their house. You know, mm-hmm. like you could pull that shit off, and no one would freaking know. Like, you could go into a tavern that's like in the middle of the woods somewhere, that's like along a horse trail, kill the people that own the tavern, and run the tavern for yourself. Just as long as no one really caught you, you'd be like, oh yeah, you know, I bought it off them. Mm-hmm. And it's oh yeah, for sure. Well, you know, it's just it's true. I, I mean, I feel me, that. For me, I um, there's I forgot the name. But there was a comic, the, the, the prequel to A Game of Thrones. It's a oh, graphic I got novel. it. It's Duncan Egg, it's man. Duncan, uh, Duncan, yes. So yeah. that came to me at a very important point in my life, and that made the most impact on me, more than any of the actual, uh, I think, the parts of the, the books or the show. The because, because, that's what it's called. Sorry. Yeah. And um, hearing his squire story and rise to, uh, you know, get his own position, it, it, that Alex, cut out. Uh, there you think, go. Hello? Hello? Oh, there you oh, go. I think that graphic novel actually was one of the biggest things that influenced me, um, you know, as to, like, how I view the world as opposed to anything else in Game of Thrones. What do you mean, like, as in how he was able to uh, just, like, he, he had no real lordly value, um... And his master died. He took up his shield and like faked it, mm-hmm. and he faked it till he faked it till he made it, basically. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You just nailed yeah. it. That's exactly that. And I took that to heart. That meant at that point in my life, it really struck. And that's um, you know, that's what really made me say I need to dedicate myself to Game of Thrones. Yeah, it's a. I did love. I have both of them too. The part one and part two, and mm-hmm. they are really good. And then there's a book too, isn't there? The Way of the Warrior or something like that. Yeah, I, I, I actually whole... honestly have not read it. Yeah, I haven't read it either, and uh, I don't. I think I'm, I might even be wrong about the title of the book, but there is a book, and it's about Duncan Egg, and it's his his apprentice is Aegon Targaryen. Mm-hmm. Oh. Yeah, that that's that I knew. That I knew. Aegon, and it's <laughs> really cool, man. He's a little bald headed kid. He shaved his head so no one could tell who he was by his blonde hair. 
So and, do you th- do you think that we're going to get a prequel based off of season two, uh, season six, episode two's beginning, where you had that flashback, where uh, you see? Do do you think that those actors that played Ned, that played um, his his brother that went to the wall, and that played uh, Leanna, the you know the Brendan, Leanna, Brendan yeah. Do, do, well, do you think Benjamin, Brandon Benjamin, Starks? Benjamin. Uh, yeah, Benjamin. 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 Yep. Yeah, it was, it was Brandon that saw it. But do you think that is us seeing a glimpse of this prequel uh, spinoff series that George Martin just, uh, you know, hinted at? Yeah, I could. I mean, I could see them doing it. They, I mean, they, so if if they do a prequel to Game of Thrones, it's going to be thousands of years before. It's not going to be to do with any of the characters. Right before know. Robert. Really? Robert okay. Ryan. I mean, I think what we're going to see, though... See, now, I watched a... Uh, after, If you watch HBO now, after the uh, episode is over, you get the, uh, the director, the writers, um, basically their piece of, of this episode. They, they do a little episode review. So mm-hmm. the one guy uh, was telling you that they don't do flashbacks in Game of Thrones. They don't like to do it. They think it's a cheap, uh, easy way to... You know, of storytelling, and they're not a big fan of it. But they said in this, this worked because they had to make it work. You know, you were use, you were seeing a not necessarily a flashback, but this was Bran looking back in time to things that were happening. And it's not like we got anything out of it. We just got to see Bran, what Bran could do with his powers. It, with it's these not powers be the last are, time we see it either. I think we're yeah, gonna and see, and I, I we're think we're going to see gonna, um, Ned go and try and rescue his sister as well. Yeah, well, I I don't. She's not really being held captive. I mean, she decided to go but with Rhaegar. You guys did know about that. The you know George Martin just said that uh, George R R Martin said that uh, a spinoff is possible. That he's yes. leaving the door open oh, for yeah. a for a spinoff based in the history of. Which is why I think it's going to be much, much further. Because if, if HBO oh. want to do a show that is set in that universe, they're not going to put themselves in a time zone where they, they can only go in a certain space of time. They're going to want to go to a place where they can do whatever the hell they want and not have any repercussions on any of this stuff we already know. Uh, see, I would disagree. I would say that I think that um, what HBO's choice based off of what HBO is, uh, they would recommend for Martin to to write this story of the history of Ned Stark because I think uh, and, and of that family of in the immediate yeah, 30 year period before Game of Thrones starts that's that's just not based off what I want necessarily that's based off what I think is most uh, viable for yeah, the because general audience yeah because <laughs> Martin you're getting uh, let me just uh, chime in on this too because right now we're already at season six. And it's only been what a handful of years, right? But if you if you've got to think about the fact that if you're trying to make a TV show and you want to make something that has an element of danger, you're never going to worry about Ned Stark because you know he lives. You know well, you he know lives until friggin- the moment you, he dies. So we don't have to no, make it no about element Ned of danger. Stark. There's no point making a TV show if you don't you're not that worried about the characters when they get into trouble. So I think it's more likely to go back into the history of Westeros a bit more with new characters where you don't know their face. I wouldn't say they have to do it necessarily about the history of Ned Stark, but they could they could go on to, you know, how what formulated Robert's rebellion. And th- they could think, definitely introduce think, you to some characters that, that you all, you'll they're care about. do that all in visions for Bran. I think we're going to get all of this story this season. Well, I think we're going to get all well, of it, but I think well, we're going to get chunks. 90 years before we have the ice and fire, we have nine, we have the the, the Duncan Egg story. 90 be years fun. before. So it's 90 years. That would be yeah. fun. So that they could do that absolutely. Yeah, because there was a lot of people in that where I when they died in the comic, I was like, "Ah, I like that dude." I mean, you get some you get uh Baratheon's yeah. like uncle or grandfather or yeah, something so in there. That's a good get, it's a good well, you get Targaryen history and the and Blackfire. The yeah, Blackfire so, war, man, the Blackfire Targaryen thing. That could be a great um, you know, medium between the history of Ned and the history of a thousand years ago. I, personally, I would love to, most of all, I'd love to see the Targaryen fall. I would love to see the Targaryen Empire in its prime and then right when it fell. That's what did I think would be the best series, personally. Did we get any Starks out of that? Because uh, I didn't finish reading the second one yet. And did we get Starks, any any Stark characters out of that uh, prequel uh, 
graphic novel? No, I don't think so. Okay, well, yeah, I, I can't remember either. But well, anyway, maybe, maybe references. But yeah, I because you know. I know we got Baratheon. I remember we got a because like he was in the the tournament or whatever that Dunk uh, that um, Duncan. Uh, well, I know we got Targaryen. We got a crazy Targaryen. Yeah, we got a crazy Tar. We got a bunch of Targaryens in there, and then we got we got the Blackfires, who are another dragon sigil. And I think they're actually like a subfamily from the Targaryens or something like that. The Targaryens, I mean, the Blackfires are wiped out, though. Like, they're gone. The Targaryens freaking killed them all. The whole family line. And I think that's a good... You could you could make a prequel series about that right there. Who were the Blackfires? And they, they do whisper a lot of crap about it in the books about the Blackfire, like a uh, family line. But mm -hmm. anyway... No, I'd, I'd still like to see something a thousand years ago when the dragons were still roaming the skies. The same way that I'd rather have like a, an Old Republic movie for Star Wars. Something yeah, that's but, way way away and doesn't make the world feel so small and clustered. Well, something all right, so, far more so back to dragons. Dragons. Let's talk about dragons in season two. Because oh! season six, episode two, I mean. Right? We, right. Saw, we learned so much about dragons. It's insane. Yeah. Much we and we learned that Tyrion likes to drink and learn. You know, oh, that was a great he was line. Waste. He was so wasted when he went to the dragon. He's like, hey, hey, dragon, I'm your friend. Let's, uh, let's hang out. Where did, okay. You know what's Good. crazy, too? I saw some sort of thing online about Tyrion possibly being a Targaryen. Did anybody oh, see that? Yes, I didn't yes, read yes, it, yes, but is it at all I'm, tangible? Like, I'm, can, I'm starting, starting a little bit to kind of think, maybe. Yeah, maybe. but do you think he that killed they his just, mother? He killed his Lannister mother, being giving birth uh, from his Targaryen father. Is that is that what they're saying? I mean, like I thought, just because of whatever he, you know, complications of birth is why she died. But, um, I mean, I don't I don't remember the full theory as to why. Yeah, either do I, and I would love to know. But I mean, so is it either that or? Do you think that because he says the dragons are very intelligent? I mean, yes. they're they're like are they even almost they they're, they're a mythical creature? They're a magical creature. We know that their scales are like so. Anyway, friggin', do you think it's just that they can basically uh, sense his? I guess like what he's about to do. Do you think that they can see that he's Coming in there, like to, do you think that there's anything to where that these dragons know what's about to happen? Because the one, like, literally just, hey, unlock my latch here. It's right here, bro. You just yeah, did that right. from a bro. And like they, the one literally charged up a bit of a fireball, was about to blow his face off, and he was like, I'm a friend. I'm a friend. And they backed Who, off. Did, Who did does any, that shit? Did any of you think? Because I had this running through my mind. I thought. He's gonna die. They're gonna eat him. Just no. Gonna, oh yeah. It's no. Gonna, it's gonna be. It's nope. gonna be like the most unexpected, horrific death possible. They just turn around and eat him, and that's it. He's gone. No. I expected no that. I did. No. But I didn't, yeah. I didn't. After one, for one it, second, how different. The only reason I didn't think so from the beginning was only because George um, is uh, he he loves Tyrion. Tyrion is his character. That's his boy, and he's admitted it. He'll still die. Oh, he's going to somewhat... I mean, they all freaking die, man. But I just knew that that wasn't his time. Oh, like Especially after movie. hearing that, that theory, and I didn't even read it, but after hearing that theory, I was like, what, who, who knew about the script? I was like, someone read the script beforehand, and now they're putting out this crazy theory so no one gets in trouble, and Alex is a pirate. All right, well, I'm going to tell you what I think. Is that That's okay? not a dragon. This <laughs> is not a dragon. No, no, I'm going to tell you what I think, though. Well, um, my personal experience, because, you know... For 20 years, my parents owned pet stores, and I owned parrots. I owned cockatoos, macaws, all those kinds of birds. And I really believe that the concept of dragons that is being, at least in the show, is really based off of how birds are. And, like, they say they're almost as smart as humans, or smarter than humans. And I see my little bird, right? And this little bird has a lot of intelligence and it has a lot of this is I have a little conure in my hand by the way for people that can't see uh, and this little bird is able to understand a lot of very like you know basic concepts 
I think that if they had a, a bird that was smart or smarter than humans, there's no reason that they would not be able to like say, hey, take me off this chain. I will be I, I see that you're a good person, Tyrion. I see that you're someone that wants to understand me. So uh, being a slave, I will I will I will give you that opportunity. And he did the right thing. He let them free. They didn't try to kill him. They didn't try to escape. They just went back into their realm, waiting for him to come back, because they might want a master. Is what I felt. And I feel that I always I always have felt that Daenerys is a failure when it comes to ruling over her dragons in the proper way. Um. So I really, really me. just want that bird to shit on you. Well, <laughs> I'm so he interested does, in that bird. They do sometimes, but I mean, I've owned birds my whole life, and so that's the perspective I come from when it comes to understanding dragons. I think it's just funny, like you're talking of, like with him in your hand, like around. it's like a conversation. He's just being emphatic with the bird. He's like, yeah, you know, bibbity bobbity, the bird here, you know, put him on my shoulder. <laughs> and he looked at Bert and look at him. He doesn't even give a shit. He's just like, all right, let me just close. No, 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 really. Neck. Like, I've trained him well. Like, just like a dragon, you can train your bird to be oh, very I, obedient. There's a great movie out there called How to Train Your Dragon. And yes, it exactly. And you so many cool things when you do well, get your first dragon. But I don't think, I, I think that Martin, maybe, I, he's, he's, a, he's an off fellow, right? Right. He's off. He's interesting. I think he probably has a collection. I think he has a harem of birds, to be honest with you. He seems like the odd kind of guy that would. I have this one little bird, but I can tell that like his personality and the way he perceives dragons, I connect to that. And I feel that that's, uh, that's kind of how he feels about dragons. Like a very, very, very smart bird. You have to give him that level of respect, and Don't they give it back to you. <laughs> He's not going to shit on me. In fact, <laughs> in fact, he is potty trained. I say poopy, and I put him over the toilet, and he poops on command every time. You say what? Yeah, <laughs> he, he, he poops on command into the toilet. That's not a joke. That is crazy. <laughs> it, do that right to back it, your neck. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that is that's pretty cool, man. I my buddy uh, had a couple birds, and uh, I, I'm not a bird fan myself, but I, I I take your meaning on what you're saying about the dragons. This is how uh, so, I think people should view dragons. That's all I'm saying. A very 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 smart bird. Yeah, because you know the in the book I forget who it was. Um, he was the Targaryen like ancestor. He was like part Targaryen that they were trying to introduce uh, to me, to marry Khaleesi. Remember? Mm -hmm. And he went to confront the dragon, but he was whipping the dragon like, mm -hmm. and he got burnt right to a friggin' crisp. And I mean, somehow he kind of lived through it a little bit, and he was like like just basically suffering from these dragon fire breathing burns and. Bird wants your headphone, and uh, <laughs> but it, I mean it's he it thinks was, uh, it's an enemy. He thinks my headphone is an enemy. But see, but it was but the way Tyrion approached him, he like he wasn't threatening. He he you know used a soft tone in his voice, almost like how you would talk to a dog too. Any, yeah, any animal yeah. that you would want to train. Exactly. So yeah, okay, exactly. I, I, I get it. I got gotcha. you. Um, so yeah, I mean. <laughs> I, I didn't think he was going to die at that part. I, for some reason, just in my heart, I knew. I was like, no way. It's season two. There's he's got so much more to go, the Tyrion. Like I just didn't think that was going to be the part uh, that that we were going to see the end of him. And I was just like, holy crap! I can't believe I, he just pulled I, that shit I, off. I agree that I thought that there's so much more that he has to do, but at mm -hmm. the same time, it's Game of Thrones. Right. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, and I didn't even think of it. I just didn't think twice. I because like after I heard that he was George's favorite character, I feel like you're gonna find out that Tyrion ends up ruling Westeros. Did you see? Did you see? Uh, fucking um, who plays Tyrion? What's his name? Uh, Dinklage. Peter Dinklage. Peter, Peter Dinklage. He just did a video saying, um, "I'm Tyrion. I'm never gonna die. I'm the most important character on the show." He's he did dead. a whole like he just did a whole music video of him singing, talking about that. He's totally fucking dead this season. Uh, no, 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 no. I think that actually, I think he believes, uh, at least at, Peter Drinklage believes that he is going to be the guy that, stop it. Stop chewing my ear. See, he stopped. I told him to stop. He stopped. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Proven wrong. Oh. <laughs> Anyways, I'll just hold you. Um, 
bigger. <laughs> no, but I think Peter Drinklage, I think that uh, we're going to see Tyrion as a better master of dragons than uh, Daenerys ever was. Yeah, yeah. That's, no, what, that's what I believe, which is very against what I've o- ever thought until this episode. Yeah, I mean, so he he just he I love him, man. He's just very freaking confident. Even if he's not feeling confident, he still like extrudes it like crazy. Like he just it's just coming out of him everywhere. Where everyone's just like, all right, listen to the midge, <laughs> like listen to the short man. Like he's freaking, what do they call him? Half man? That's it. Half yeah, man. Amp. Listen to the half man. And freaking, even uh, what's his face is just going along with it. Uh, Varys. Viserys. What, what? Is that his name? Varys. Varys. Yeah. The freaking spider. Whatever. He. Master no. of Whispers. Yeah, Master but they call him the, the they call him the spider too. I know. Um, but yeah, he, he just doesn't give a shit either. He's freaking following what the hell he knows Tyrion's smart he's the one who you know was like we need you uh, they this... are going to be the last people in the show I think. to die mm-hmm. I don't think they're going to die I, th- I think the show's going to end and we're going to have somebody on the throne and we're going to have Tyrion and Varys there with them Varys for sure I, I, I hope that it is um, well I think personally I I think the imp will be the one that takes the throne at the end of the day. If there is, watch your cord, Alex. Can you hear me? Yep, we're yeah. good. All right. Uh, if there is a resolved ending to Game of Thrones, it's going to be that Tyrion is the king. That's my opinion. I don't think it's Jon Snow. I think it's Tyrion. Um, that's me. Mainly because his quote from uh, the episode two in season six. Uh, someone asked him, how do you know how dragons do uh, not like to be in, cap- in captivity? And he says, that's what I do. I drink and I know things. And the person that drinks and knows things will always win. You know what's <laughs> funny too? I think because Jon Snow respects Tyrion. And that is I true. could see Jon Snow putting him as king and him keeping his lord commandership because Jon Snow Absolutely. is a Stark and he believes completely and utterly in honor. Absolutely. At Whether or time, not he'll bend right? his rules. No, the, the thing is, though, the whole point of um, the uh, the Night's Watch is that your your oath is that you're there until you die. Yeah. Like, Jon Snow died. You're right. You're his right about that. Complete. He's a free man. Yeah, yeah, you're right about that. I mean, shit, you can't argue with that, man. And I didn't even think about that until you just said it. And Spoiler, yeah. Jon Snow lives. Yeah, well... We get that at the end there when he has that orgasm when he yeah, wakes up. Yeah, have we hit that hour marker yet where we can uh, finally get to like the huge spoilers of season? Uh, we, we, of- yeah. So yes. all right, <laughs> I mean like Jon Snow lives. All right, everyone. He wakes the hell up after the Red Prince gives him a shave and a haircut, uh, burns all of his hair. Red uh, Prince. The red. I mean the Red Witch. The four hundred year old crazy. Uh, she's all freaking depressed now, like some goth true. girl in high school. And, uh, you know, no, life is fair. I was wrong. Yeah, it was actually, it was actually kind of nice. She was having a crisis of faith, and I think that was actually kind of important. I'm her. just kidding, man. God. Anyway, so she freaking cuts all of his hair off. Uh, not all of it, but, you know, she cleans him up so we can see how pretty his knife wounds are. Well, and was it that or was, it that he was, was he doing the same thing? Was she, was, she, was the red uh, witch doing the same thing that uh, Arya did to the dead. Was it not the same, about 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 the exact same ritual? Wash him. Wash yeah. him, cut his hair, clean his hair. It, 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 it seemed like the exact same scenario. Well, we know that Until, that religion comes from over there. Yeah, so what? what's the root? I, I don't know. Maybe it was just a respect for his body, you know, respect for the dead. They do have a lot of respect for the dead. Um, over in uh, what city, Marine or not wherever Arya is right now? Bravos, uh, right? Bravos, yeah. Bravos. And I mean, even Valeria. It just seems like that religion. Those people, they have a different respect for their dead. Because um, the know, red, uh, the red witch, whatever her name is, didn't believe in it. She was like, "I can't do this. I can't do anything." 
Yeah, she did, and and she did. She lost her faith, and she was pulling some crazy stuff. And I think Davos kind of talked her back into. It. He's like, "Look, I'm not asking for your Red Lord of Light." He's like, "I'm asking for the woman that showed me crap that I've never even thought possible." And you know, she went down. She did a little of this, little of that, and so what? The big question is, did she do something? Or here's my theory. Let me just break this out. Throughout all of the books, we have learned that Bran. We have learned that Arya, and we have also learned that John all dream of being inside their wolves. Actually, when they really as well. are, the inside amount of the times world. that camera was focused on Ghost before they're he came wargs. Mm -hmm. They're all A wargs. Lot. They're all freaking wargs. And in the book, one of the dudes, a warg. He was like the one that John killed. Like, remember the hawk that he had yeah, that would fly? That's right. He killed it like when he was inside of it, and it like hurt him a lot. Well, he ends up dying. His body gets killed, and he ends up having to warg inside of his wolf to keep his soul alive, to keep him his mind alive. And he can like take over. You can take over other humans too if your will is strong enough as a warg with this power. We learn this in the book. So. He's getting stabbed. He starts to die. Warg's inside a ghost without even knowing that he's doing it. He's protecting his body. Right. I mean, yes, Ghost is loyally faithful to Jon Snow, but I uh, still I have a good feeling that he was in there. And I absolutely think absolutely by this theory, just by the fact that they kept focusing on Ghost, and Ghost was just lying really, really still, and then he's like, he suddenly woke up again. Mm. Just, just before John came back. God, I lo I do love this theory, but I hate to be that guy to disagree, but I do disagree. I think that Ghost was the one that first detected Jon Snow's spirit coming back into him. Now, I'm not I'm, I'm not saying you're wrong. That right. We made, need the, we, we need different sides, man. We yeah, always yeah. need uh, different opinions. But, but the thing that really struck out to me was that you saw he's sleeping. John's dead. He's sleeping. John's dead. Oh, he's waking up. There's something coming about. And then about five, ten seconds later, then John's spirit reanimates. So that's that's what I took. Is that because of course animals always detect those those supernatural things before humans do, right? Yeah, I hate that crap, man. When a dog's right. like staring at a wall or just like yeah, some yeah, yeah. And that's yeah. what it was. I think, and I'm not saying that his his spirit was not embodied in uh, in Ghost. I'm just saying that Ghost was the first one. For sure, I, I believe the for sure he he detected his spirit reanimating into Jon Snow before it even happened. And that's what animals do. Right. I while I understand your point, well though I have to say that the way that that was shot to me seemed very much like it was just the dog coming back. That moment that he was, it was mm. like John was sitting there, just sitting there patiently, and then suddenly he could, his, you know, his consciousness was moving back to his body, and it was just ghost again, just coming back as a dog. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, and I mean, shit, it, it, it's. I'm, I'm, I'm it's sure we'll so find out in the next open. episode as well. I'm sure, surely it'll be right? good because it'll be yeah, like either John, John will say like, "I was in Ghost." Yeah, or, I really do think that's going to happen too. Yeah, or I was dead. I was, you know, I saw my mother. And I saw the maybe what if, he, what if what if he freaking like from this experience? Um, because we know that the where the werewoods are basically connected. Uh, they're they're not linear. They freaking have no concept of the time that you can when you're attached to these. When you're seeing through the werewoods, you're seeing time all the all of time at the same time basically, and it's up to Bran. Or the, the 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 guy Max von Sydow, Lorsen Tekka, whatever you want to call him, <laughs> he's he's freaking in the he's the tree master right now, and and uh, so what if John like when he dies like and your soul is is in this, you know maybe maybe it's your energy is passed in through the the old gods through the werewolves or something maybe he learned what who he was somehow, hey. you know. Um, and, and like awakes and he's like, oh, my mom was freaking Lyanna Stark. Like, like knows, you know, that would be cool. That'd be freaking Gosh. cool. You know, that'd be some shit. But uh, it, we'll, we'll only find out next episode. But I mean, come on, guys. Who wants to see 
fucking uh, that piece of shit. Uh, what's his name? Oh God, I can't believe I can't recall his name. I'm Ramsey. So, yeah, Ramsey. Ramsey. Bolt. Get just I. I the, I want to see the most. I want to make sure that his death is something that I can't sleep because I really like like Oberyn. Right. When I saw that head get, I that dude that literally bothered me for a day or two. Where I wa after watching that, I thought I watched a snuff film. But mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I want to see that. I God damn it, man! That guy needs to freaking have. That, I mean, come on, Fat Walda. She was so innocent. She was so like like you didn't need to. You, her baby was not destined to be innocent, though. Yeah, that's true. And Look I mean, you at know that what? Father. Yeah, Roos was, uh, and even in the sorry, I keep saying it, I mean, even in the books, the way they just because you don't get exactly who Roos is just by watching. He's actually a lot more calm, cool, and collected than most. Um, and you actually see mercy in him a lot, the way he let Brienne of Tarth go. But in the books, man, he's the leader of the Flaidmen. The, the sigil of the flayed man. Like, their, their signa signature move is to fillet their enemies a frickin' live and leave them exposed until they die. Like, that's what they do. So, yeah, Roos is a frickin' scary-ass dude, and Ramsey is just is more fucked up. Cause he I was happy. Shiv's old daddy in the frickin' abdomen... And now he's gonna Ramsey's gonna lose it though. He's got no real commit. Like mm -hmm. he's a good, like gent, like general, in army, to like do what needs to be done in order to spread fear or whatever. Do I guess. Be done. But he's no leader when it comes to, you know, being the lord of a of a like the warden of the north. He doesn't have that uh, that futuristic sense of thinking ahead. You know, I mean, um, he's talking I, I, about it. He just wants to kill people. He just wants to kill. Yeah. Is your mic cord messed up too, Mark? Hodor. Dude, Hodor. Oh my God. Hodor. And how about that part when uh, one one gets shot in the freaking shoulder? The giant gets shot in the shoulder. He rips that dude out and he just, just smacks. He just him. Freaking gave him the old Loki oh, treatment. So good. Right against the freaking, uh, right against the wall, man. And then not only that, what about the 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 mountain when the dude was talking? Here's a question: How the fuck did he know? How did the mountain is like is like the magic that's keeping that motherfucker alive? Um, is that like can he sense when anybody's even talking shit on Cersei? Because the dude's just at some local dive bar talking about like how he banged Cersei or he was going to give her a piece when she did the walk of shame. He went to, he goes to take a piss in the alley Smash. and just gets fucking head smashed. Oh that was my, my favorite part. My I favorite love episode. it. <laughs> if you slow I it down, it. man. If when his face got smashed in, it was like, that actually makes me justify the mountain. I like the mountain for doing that. That, that, was, that was pretty damn good. I mean, dude, that was insane. But like, here I'm thinking, I'm like, where was he? How the hell did he know that that this specific guy was was having a laugh at the bar about Cersei, and he just <laughs> literally just one freaking stiff arm to the wall, and that dude's back of his head exploded. That motion was better than anything I've seen on any horror movie, or it was like Evil Dead, like an it was like an Evil Dead shot, but like. Far better than anyone ever could have made. It was like I don't know. To me, it you was. You saw the back of his head beautiful. cave in. You saw it cave in, and then you see the matter exactly. just like kind of fall yeah. off the wall. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man, it was, like, it, was, was... it was gore. It was gore that you could love. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, exactly because it didn't make me cringe because it was far enough away where I didn't get to like you know. But like over <laughs> when that shit happened to over it, man, I was just like, oh my god. No, I was crushed. <laughs> I was crushed. I was seriously no, hurt he was when crushed. Oberyn had that. <laughs> when his yeah, when his skull crushed, I was crushed. Yeah, it made my brain hurt too. Oh man. So anyway, so that that those were two things I wanted to bring up. Uh, we also got oh, uh, the Greyjoy king's moot. Well. The king's moot. Yeah, Theon Greyjoy is now going to basically no, what's Balon. he going to do? His dad dead. And now Theon can possibly be king. No, no. It's Euron. Now, there's it's many Euron. stories about Euron. In the book, there's many stories about Euron. Um, well, there's, there's two stories. 
about him. Uh, he he goes off to foreign lands, yep. and there there's stories of him putting such fear into people that hear that he is coming, and that in itself just tells me so much about what's coming through him. I know he went crazy, and uh, you know you know his brother says that he went crazy, and that that meant that uh, he's not. The uh, you know the drowned god, he believes he's the drowned god, but I believe that um, there, there's truth to it. Just like with Melisandre failing, uh, thinking she's a failure of her god, maybe Euron believes he is the drowned god. Uh, in a kind of not, re he doesn't really grasp what's happening, but the things that he says will come true have come true. He said that he would overcome his brother, and then he did. The storm came, and he threw him off the bridge. Um, you know, there's there's many things. I think that Euron is going to be a huge character from now on. Yeah, I I, I think so too because he did become co pretty dominant in the book, um, and that that see now we know I know what's going to happen with this king's moot. They already it's already happened in the book. I, I, they're a little late on it in the actual. Uh, with with this right now in HBO, uh, I don't know why. I mean, I guess there was just more interesting story to because I'm, I'm not. I really don't care about the King's Mood stuff in the book. It really didn't. There wasn't a big impact on everything else that was going on yet. We haven't seen it impact yet. Um, but we know. I, I know a certain thing that happens in the book. Um, who wins this King's Moot? Where um, the daughter? What's her name? I can't remember. But. Uh, Basically, if she had a, you know, she's she's pretty much a Yara. man. Besides, besides, yeah. So she's tough as shit. Uh, if she had a dick, she'd be a dude. But oh, for sure. <laughs> her brother fingered her. Her right, brother I, fingered her. Her brother fingered her. Yo, oh God! God. She Why let she let times? her brother finger her. Ah, four. We already we're already used to brother sister fucking with Jamie and oh, fucking. Oh come on! God damn, it was, it was, we're oh, already numb to that one. We're already numb to the that shit. I'm not numb. I it, it oh, was that was bad. such a fucked up part too. She let it happen. That's mm -hmm. the fucked up part. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Now I'm even more grossed out. Anyway, so you're uh Euron pushes uh Balon off the bridge. In the book, he kind of just happens mysteriously because Melisange was using King's blood to make magic happen, and every time she used King's blood to make magic happen, you know, one of the bloodline. Like leaders would die, right? Isn't that the way it happened in the book? Like, I'm, gonna be, uh, I'm gonna be honest with you. When I was very young, I read the books. And you can't remember all of it. I can't remember and all of it either. When, when I heard there was a TV show coming out, I stopped. I was like, <laughs> you know what? The TV show is what I want to pay attention to. So, anything that came after the the you know the books when the movie came, when the show came out, I stopped paying attention. That's okay. It. All right, all right, that's cool. I uh, I think that's how it went down. I'm pretty sure if whoever does listen to this or watch it is going to correct me heavily. Uh, at Stay on Target 42, go ahead. And um, so the thing is, is uh, it wasn't a tag. He was legitimately saying, "Hey, if you want to confront me about this topic." No, I know. It just it just reminded me of of one of the uh, the uh, conversations in Coruscant video that we did where he said his handle like six times in a row. Yeah. Yeah, at Stay on Target 42. Well, you, know you know what? Maybe, maybe, maybe you need to stay on target then, because uh, you, you're getting off target. We gotta get off target. Yeah, we are. We do gotta get back on. So, Mart. So she did wake up. Uh, so John Snow wait, woke up at the end, but we did. And Tyrion released the dragons. We talked about that. Uh, what else? What else did we get out of this episode? We didn't get to see Khaleesi. We got to see. We didn't get to see. Uh, you know, the Sand Snakes are declaring war. We didn't get to see that yet. Um, what else do we have? We had. I still want to know where Bron is. Yeah, that's I a good Bron. one. Yeah, where's Bron? I don't think he's really a major factor right now. I mean, he was really just kind of a funny, cool dude, but he didn't really have like a big story behind him. So I think they're really just chewing into the meat right now to get us back in. I th I think he's gonna find his way back to Tyrion. Oh yeah, I, I would love that. But he, d d yeah, because did he leave with? Uh, did did we see him depart with Jamie? No, I th I think he I think he's still in Dawn. And he, yeah, you know, he would love it being in there. Dude loves just to have a good time. Yeah, but if the Dawnish are about to go to war, 
with the Lannisters, he's going to run. He's going to go somewhere else. He doesn't like, yeah, he doesn't want to get tossed up in this crap. Um, but, so, we, uh, so, it starts off, though, with King Tommen also, um, sweet, sweet Tommen. It starts off with him uh, going to, uh, what is it? Um, he was, he went to see his sister, Marcellus, and um, she is dead with the rocks with the eyes on them, which is friggin' weird. We had the encounter with Jamie and the, the friggin' uh, potato sack uh, priest. Uh, that didn't, you know, the, Jamie didn't make his move like we wanted him to. Uh, potato sack priest has a lot of power. Uh, we, you, you know, mean Bernie, Sarah's, right? Bernie? Yeah, oh, old Bernie, pota potato sack wearing Bernie Sanders. <laughs> I, he's still Elliot Carver to me. Right. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, so, so what are we missing here? What what else happened in this uh, episode that we're missing? I mean, the big wow was John, and I think another big wow was Tyrion freeing the dragons. Yeah, um, and and the t the two lords dying as well. I mean, I didn't see Bruce Bolton's death coming a mile away. Yeah, Bruce Bolton. Oh man, and I mean, just like we, uh, we had no, two huge right. deaths, didn't we? Mm. Yeah. We had one we had, one, we of had the, Baylon, one of the one of the five kings, the yep. last of the five kings, die. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, because uh, frickin' Balon is just a warden, and he's not an actual, like, a top bloodline. So he wasn't considered a king, like, trying to be king. He wasn't even trying to be king. He was just, war he wanted to be warden. He just wanted to control the north. He was listening to whoever was he, King Tommen. He wasn't trying he, to be a he king. Talk, he talking about Roose Bolton? Or... Roose Bolton, yeah. He just wanted right, to be warden of the north. You just said fucking Balon Greyjoy. I was saying, because Greyjoy no, well, called himself king of the Iron Islands. Well, that's what I was saying. Balon was the last king to die. That's right. what I meant. I'm yeah, you were right, Alex. Yeah, he is the last of the five. And, uh, yep. So, no, we, it's, a, uh, it's a lot to take in that, yeah, that we had five kings war. And that we saw through season by season all five of them die, except for now. And now we just now, in, uh, you know, episode two of season six see him come back. And then, of course, he opposes his daughter, who had wisdom to impart on him, and he, uh, you know, he fortook that, and then he went across a bridge, and his brother killed him. What do you know? Yeah. And now, yeah. I, and I'm very much looking forward to episode three now, though. Yeah, so, mm -hmm. all right. Exactly. Before before we close out, let's. Uh, what do you What do you think we're gonna get, Mart? Well, next episode. Yeah, I like what do you? I what think you... I think we're gonna get um, a scroll handed to Jon Snow by uh, Sir Davos, which was something that Stannis signed before he died, which was granting Jon Snow his title of Jon Stark. <laughs> I I th I think Jon Snow is going to be Jon Stark in this season. You believe yeah. that he's going to he's going to take that loophole of I, being I think, dead? Yeah, I and think he's ends his leave, watch. Leave the watch. He's going to become Jon Stark, and he's going to go to Winterfell. All right, that makes sense because they always yeah, say as long I as mean, Stark dude, Rams, is alive in the genius, North, it's genius. Ramsey needs to get it, dude. Ramsey Ramsey needs to get. I, I, he needs to get the bastard sword shoved right up his bastard ass. And freaking Jon uh, Snow is gonna kill Ramsay, and he's he probably better gonna kill Theon. Oh, well. he's gonna freaking dude! It would be the most sweetest revenge ever. But from what Alex said, you know that's what you think fair is, and maybe we won't get that. Yeah. You know, but I think We're Ramsay's done enough shit. End. Yeah, I think well, Ramsay's done enough shit to where we might we're we're gonna get what we want out of out of his death. I think. I fucking hate that guy. I, mm -hmm. I mean, dude, uh, everybody does. How could you even be that actor and go walking around and be like, yo, dude, back off. You know what I mean? Just even the guy, the actor. Like, I, I'd just be like, I don't want to meet you. <laughs> you play an asshole and I don't like him. Uh, but, no, I, I I really, I would love to see that happen, uh, Mart, is is to see Jon Snow take Winterfell back uh, as, John as John Stark. Stark. Yeah, yep. But I mean, I would, I really want him. I, I, 
I want. I, I. I still fully believe that he is the son of Rhaegar and Lyanna Stark. I. I'm starting to believe that too, but I also well, don't Rhaegar's think Targaryen. he's going to take the Iron Throne. I don't think he cares. I think. No, I don't think he's going to. Yeah, and I think he's going to take his father's name if anything. Well, yeah. I would say well, because both of you do not believe that uh, Jon Snow is going to be the one that ends up on top of the Iron Throne. That's the reason, if anything, that he will end up being the one that does take the Iron Throne. He will be the one on top because he is the humble, uh, good, uh, now alive. And then Tyrion the hand. Tyrion, yeah, Tyrion is the hand. I'll take Tyrion as the hand. hand. You know, I, I think that's what, that's my ultimate lineup. Yeah, uh, I I agree that Tyrion will be the hand to whoever sits on that throne. I don't He's... think Daenerys has any role in it. I think she's going to be killed in a way that we will all believe. You know what? She deserved it. Is it I, me, I, or do you think her story is kind of starting to die off a little? A her little. story has been dying off for seasons. Thank you. I wouldn't say Thank you. I, I, certainly last season it started to weaken a bit. I started to get a little bit less less interested ever since um, Mormon left her. Mm -hmm. um, it's not it that just, her story weakens. It's that she is she, weak. Yeah. She's, weak. she's I, getting weak. I think she's going to end up getting killed by her own dragons at this point. She'd be I killed by anyone. Anyone. Yeah. She's, she's yep. weak. She's worthless almost. Yeah, right now she is nothing. And I mean she's losing her power day by day because, you know, at first she had I guess what was it, hope at her back, and now that all of these misguided views that she had are starting to fall all apart around her, she can't handle the pressure. Well, I'm gonna say this. When I said that Daenerys will die, my bird flew off me to my wife, and I think it's a bad omen. Yep. I believe it. <laughs> Right. <laughs> I, I think, think I she's... think I think the season's gonna be quite eventful though. If if I'm if my if my guessing is right that she's gonna raise an army of these widows and That'd escape. Nice. That'd be that legit. that will be damn cool. Yeah. If, yeah, if but we I get you John know what Stark anything... and we get a widow's army, I'm I'm sold on this season. Like like I just don't feel like she cares enough about like this whole time it doesn't seem like she's so uh, driven to go to Westeros. It seems like she's more caring about freeing, you know, what's it called? That the land, uh, Esteros? It's Westeros, and Est mm -hmm. I think it's literally like that. East and, and West. Yeah, I know. I get it. But I'm just saying, I, I just didn't know the name. <laughs> but she's over well, there. Know, like and eight, I... tenths, eight tenths of the world in, in the Game of Thrones are undiscovered by the show. Right. About eight tenths. Right, it's like crazy. North Aros and South Aros. Mm. <laughs> like the Maparos. Yeah. <laughs> so, you go yeah, around to the other side of the map and it's fucking Hobbiton. Yeah. <laughs> it is about Hobbiton, yes. It is actually Lord of the Rings. It's all Lord uh, of the Rings. The other side is Middle Earth. Felt, Martin, Martin just kind of like uh, forgot. Like, ah, I have, I have too much map. Let's just, just implement uh, Lord of the Rings. Let's just put that to the rest of the map. Right. So anyway, we got a really good uh, setup. It was a good setup, and we got a really good second episode, which I was really happy to see that they really ramped it up right away. You know, everyone didn't have to wait till like freaking mid-season to see if you know that these guys are standing in this room for freaking four episodes because you know that it, they, how they do that crap. I, I totally called it as well, didn't I? Didn't I tell you that they'll, they'll just do it sooner rather than later as well? I'm, I'm so story. glad they did because you know Me what? I'm, I'm learning that they have to jam a lot of story in because there's apparently there's two more books to finish yeah. this off with. So they got to, and I think there's only going to be this season and then like one more after that. And I don't even think it's going to, from what I heard rumor, I don't think it's going to be a full-size season. Oh, uh, no, 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 no. I think there's going to be two more seasons and then a, uh, you know, a box office movie. Okay. All right. Oh, two wow. seasons a box and office then movie. a box office movie. I that, mean, it's like they could totally that do that, too. That will be the conclusion. That's that my personal some shit. view. That'd be some shit, dude. And, I mean, that would be – and it's not like and they couldn't be time pull it between, off. There may be time between the seasons – and that last movie, I think there's gonna be maybe a couple, couple of years, maybe. Yeah, they make a good chunk of money off the movie, whatever. Mm -hmm. the, I mean, the production value of the show already is movie quality. They might have to, That's... you know, spice it up a little bit more. But you know, well, really... I think they want to compete. If they want, if they want to compete with the other box office movies of that type, 
it'll take time, more than they have been doing. Because, you know, it's one season, one year. That's what they've been doing. Yep. And, and that's, with... not, that's not what they do with box office movies. No. no yeah. Far more time. More of a situation, yeah. Well, well, they get they'll probably start shooting. I mean, the next season they'll start shooting in what, like four months. Yeah. I, oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. Well, it's gonna be a wild ride. I, I so far they have not gotten stale like uh, Walking Dead or any of those other shows. Hawking uh, they... Dead is that you said? Hawking Dead. <laughs> I never heard of that show. Hawking Dead. Um, yeah. I've heard a show like that. It's 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 a pretty interesting show. Kind of is tapered off, you know. Kind of is watered down what the comics had imposed on the, uh, the you know, the the actual story. But you know, it's fine. I was the really Hawk into Dead. it, but I haven't seen the last two seasons. Yeah, ah, I just, you're probably it, better off not watching those last two seasons. Like we're on Wait, season six. One. We're on <laughs> season six of Game of Thrones, and I'm like, oh my god! But like with Walking Dead, I'm like, ah, yeah, well, maybe I'll catch up back up. Uh, Walking Dead will get better. I promise. I promise. I promise. I know the comics. I know what's coming. They just delayed it so much. They delayed it for years. For two years, they've delayed the actual important story because they want to make money. Are we going to ignore the fact that your wife just put a bird on you? She just threw a bird on you. Yeah, me. she did. <laughs> it's like, dang him. Anyway, so <laughs> this has, uh, we're going to wrap this up because I feel like we've touched on everything and we're going to bring you another episode. Uh, whoever's listening next week, I, I, I really like uh, doing the episode breakdowns. It's, it's awesome, you know, and, and just kind of getting everyone's idea on what might happen and kind of just gets you charged up and you can't wait for uh, speculation. Yeah, it's great, man. It's awesome. So this has been Whispers in Westeros. Thank you for joining us. Join us next week as we tackle episode three. We'll be doing an episode a week. We just we figured the uh, first episode and second episode could be worked as one. That's a lie. Work. What we did is we forgot to do the first episode. Boy, we you we did have it organized. Have it. You but went now and we said, have it organized. It's it was organized uneventful. now. <laughs> anyway. It's organized now. We yeah, fucked up, right? We fixed it. Up. It's good. <laughs> it's not my fault. Anyway. So thank you for joining us. Have a wonderful week until we see you next week and get to talk about the crazy shit that's happened on episode three. Or it could be Dan, really Dan, where knows. can people find you on Twitter? Oh, yeah. Plugs. Hey, I am at stayontarget42 if you didn't know. And you can get me at stayontarget42 at Gmail. And stayontarget42 everywhere else. And stayontarget42, stayontarget42, stayontarget42. Alex, where can people find you online? Um... Got, this is what I do. If, if I squeeze my bird just a little bit, he makes noises. He's like a squeaky toy. Just it's a like, little bit. You can find Alex at Bird Abuser on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> That's not how it works. <laughs> As Han Solo said. <laughs> um, well, uh, I'm actually on May the 4th, 2016 launching my first uh, episode, my first two episodes of uh, my Star Wars talk show, which uh, the first one will be me talking with other people, and then the second one is going to be me, me talking about the new book that just came out about Star Wars, which tells um, all the details you don't want to know, well, that you didn't get in uh, The Force Awakens. Awesome. Six years before it. Awesome. All of them. It tells all the story that you were like, hey, the Force Awakens didn't tell me uh, the answers I want to know. Well, the book does. And uh, on May the 4th, I'll have my first release, and then I'll have a good 45-minute uh, dissection of that the whole book. Oh, so, man, that's great. So that's right. it. So we'll and put I've... some links to that in the description of the video. Yeah, also, yeah. I forgot to mention TGR Entertainment. Uh, go to uh, thegalacticroundtable.net. You can also find me there where we do, and, and uh, Mr. Mart here is also involved with uh, the TGR Entertainment peeps, where uh, you can find our shows, Good Time Hour. I'm on that. P Dan and Pete's Good Time Hour and also TGR Star Wars Hour. That's it for me. Sorry, Mart. Go ahead, buddy. And, and you can find me uh, everywhere at Mart Speaks and GammaTube is at GammaTube everywhere. Uh, thank you for joining us. Thank Predictable, because he was yeah. very tantrum-esque. I was like, you yep. really didn't know what he, this guy was going to do. I mean, he, he just tells him some bad news, and he just destroys a console right in front of him. And then he goes, oh, but 
and he's just trying to tell him the truth. He's like, and there was a girl, and he just, what girl? <laughs>